In this module, we are going to build and experiment with a computational model. You will learn about the field of computational neuroscience and some important methods when simulating data. And you'll also gain more experience translating mathematical equations into code. This is a really important skill for any kind of scientific programming, not only computational neuroscience. And perhaps the most novel concept that we will cover here are MATLAB live scripts. Now, if you have no idea what these are, then don't worry, you are going to find out. In fact, you're in for quite a treat. MATLAB live scripts are quite a bit different from normal MATLAB scripts. Anyway, uh, we will get to working with live scripts in the next video. For the rest of this video, I want to introduce you to the field of computational neuroscience. The idea of computational neuroscience is to develop and work with computational simulations, so computer simulations, which are essentially just a series of mathematical equations that are used to characterize activity in different parts of the brain or in different parts of a cell. Now, computational neuroscience is a really big field and it varies quite a lot in its granularity from super highly detailed compartment models of individual neurons all the way up to more abstracted or conceptual models of systems and processes. So for example, this is a drawing of a single neuron. This is the soma or the cell body. These are all the dendrites out here. And the idea of a detailed compartment model is to have very biophysically and morphologically accurate models of individual parts of a neuron. So each individual compartment, each little, little piece of this dendritic ramification is governed by its own set of equations. So there might be, you know, dozens or hundreds, maybe even thousands of equations that are running through to simulate just this one brain cell. And then we move up to, you know, increasing levels of abstraction. Here we have what's called a single compartment model. These are models that still retain some biophysical plausibility, but they don't have any morphology. So the whole, so this whole circuit is representing one entire brain cell. And of course we go up to higher levels of abstraction where we have models that are capturing some core dynamics of how neural systems behave without worrying about incorporating any specific biology or morphology into the models. In other words, the physiological details are abstracted away. In this module, we're going to be working with a single compartment model. So a model that you could draw a diagram for that would look something like this. Okay, so the general goal of computational neuroscience is to use mathematics and computer simulations to understand core features of brain dynamics. It's all based on running models of the brain where a model is a set of equations that govern some simplified representation of how a neuron works or how a circuit or a system in the brain works. All models vary in their level of plausibility. Some models are highly biophysically detailed and morphologically accurate. Other models are more dynamical and abstracted. And these Different models have their own sets of advantages and limitations. You wouldn't really say that one level of modeling is necessarily better or worse than another uh, level of modeling. They just have different goals. They use to understand the nervous system at different levels. Now, before showing you the model that we will actually be working with in this module, I want to give you one example of a model that's kind of at an intermediate scale of granularity. So it's not exactly super duper highly, incredibly morphologically detailed, but is also not dynamical and abstracted. So these are the equations that govern the model. And you can see it gets pretty hairy pretty quickly. So computational neuroscience is a fairly mathematically intense field of neuroscience. This set of equations, this model, is called the Hodgkin-Huxley model. You can see it's spelled down here on the URL. Hodgkin and Huxley developed this model in the 1940s, and they got the Nobel Prize for this work in physiology in uh, somewhere in the 1960s. I forget the exact year. Okay, so this is just an example. I wanted to show these equations just to give you a bit of a sense of what one model looks like. This is one of the most influential and important models in all of computational neuroscience. Okay, so now let's get to the model 
that we will be using in this course. It's called the Adaptive Exponential Integrate and Fire Model. I chose uh, to work with this model here because I think it provides a nice balance between being a challenge to implement, but it's also not too difficult, and it's also a pretty commonly used model. So that is, you find this model being used quite often in the computational neuroscience literature. So the model has two key variables, one that governs the membrane voltage potential, given here by the orange V, and an update variable, W, that I have here in this greenish cyan color. So the idea is that at each time step in the simulation, we compute V and W according to these three equations here. And the yellow I here corresponds to the input, so that is the input into the neuron that we can control. And it's basically representing the sum total of synaptic activity into this model neuron. And all the symbols in blue correspond to parameter, parameters that we can change. These are parameters that we can define. And by specifying different values for these parameters, we can generate a really wide range of behaviors from this model neuron. And that's what you see here. So each of these different subpanels corresponds to the membrane voltage, so the variable V, plotted over time. So time is on the x-axis, V is on the y-axis here. And each subplot corresponds to a different set of parameters. So this model can produce regular spiking neurons, bursting neurons, adaptive responses, and so on. So we get quite a lot of diversity just from these three equations by setting the parameters in carefully tuned ways. Okay, and what you see on the left here in each of these subplots shows the parameter V plotted by the parameter W. So now time is actually incorporated into the dynamics of these plots. This is called a phase plot and it helps reveal the dynamical properties of the neurons. But here we're mostly going to be focusing on plotting the membrane potential over time, like these plots on the right. In the rest of this module, we are going to focus on simulating only one neuron. But in practice, if you're doing computational neuroscience, you would simulate many, many of these neurons. And the neurons can have different sets of parameters. And that allows you to explore, for example, how different types of neurons will interact with each other. So maybe in, you know, in practice, in actual computational neuroscience research, you might have hundreds or thousands of neurons that are all governed by the same equations, possibly with different sets of parameters. And then you can connect all these neurons to each other through this I variable here. Okay, I hope that's enough of an introduction to computational neuroscience. The next video actually doesn't involve neuroscience at all because I just want to introduce you to MATLAB Live Scripts. After that, we will build the model that I just showed you the equations for and then create a function for that model and then we start running a couple of experiments.